I'm Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to my LinkedIn Live. I do these daily at noon where I discuss process and procedures for how to succeed in the federal government marketplace. Um, I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal marketplace, and since 2018, I've been teaching people like you how to succeed in government contracting and, and to understand that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. Part of what I'm going to talk to you about today is um, a process related to how to sell to the Army. And I'm going to cover three main port, uh, uh, bullet points that I want to cover. One is research. The other is outreach. And the third is capture. And I'm going to go through these three in the next 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. And by the time we get to the end, I hope I have given you enough that any agency that you want to go to, but in particular the Army, you have this pattern for how to go find information, um, begin to progressively get to more detailed information that leads to uh, people you can call that leads to you picking up the phone and calling somebody and trying to sell to the government. It's not a transactional sale, right? It doesn't happen um, in real time, <clears throat> but uh, you know, over six to 24 months, it starts with you picking up that phone for the first time. So I'm gonna share a lot of different screens. Um, I'm gonna pull over there. Let me go ahead and turn my face off and share my screen. And I'm going to go through a lot of um, a lot of screens. First thing I wanted to point out is on the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, GovConChamber.com website, you'll find that we have a homework series. And in here, we've got a lot of different agencies, but in particular, we've got the Army. And the reason I'm pointing this out is you can browse this on your own, but there are um, a fair amount of good videos that I have down here related to the Army um, vision, explaining it, walking you through these videos, uh, explaining the, the major commands in there. <clears throat> excuse me, coming down, there was a panel interview we did, which is great. A little older video, but still totally relevant. Nothing really changes fast in the federal space. Um, so these people shared information was great. And um, down at the bottom, you see me breaking up CECOM, uh, but it's this one particular Army Information Systems Engineering Command, breaking it up and helping you understand uh, what they are, how they do business, et cetera. So these are great videos for you to go um, review on your own. As we go forward, I'm not going to be able to see your questions until the or chat, et cetera. So um, <clears throat> uh, go ahead and put them in. If you got questions, I'll, I'll leave a little bit of time and answer any questions at the end. So the first thing you want to do if you want to sell to the Army is you have to understand the Army's uh, command structure. How are they organized? And by understanding how they're organized, you're going to understand uh, what they do, right? And so this is a great site here, and I'll put this link in um, after this video posts up on on LinkedIn, I'll come back in the comments and put all these links that I'm, I'm mentioning today. But here, I'm just going into the Army's site and they've got a great organizational breakdown. So the first part that you come to is just understanding the Army command structure. It's broken up into three different um, groups, if you will, Army commands, Army service component commands, and then direct reporting units. And I'll go in in a little bit and explain what these do. And I'll show you other documents actually that teach you what these do. I don't wanna, uh, come across today as an army expert, even though I was in the army, what I want to do is to come across as an expert on helping you find the information to learn more. Um, so when I look at these, I begin to try to uh, learn more. The army does a great job with this page. I can come down and I see where they, they talk about um, futures command, AMC, force comm, TRADOC, and I can begin to get a better understanding. Let's say my space is in training. I might just naturally look here and go, Huh, I wonder if I can go into trade off training and doctrine command. And I wonder if there's a place as a, as a small business for me to support the army there. So it's a great way to look at that. The next group are these army service component commands. And in here, uh, a big one, like a customer I have is, is uh, very focused on cyber. I've done a video in the past, a whole webinar on uh, DOD cyber is a $10 billion spend. And then the army has this big component of it this ability to begin to learn more about Army Cyber Command. I can click on these at any given point. I can click on it and dig further into um, each one of these commands by going to their sites and looking at their information. I'm not gonna go to that level today because we don't have a lot of time. And I, all these tabs that you see open, by the way, are all, are all things I'm gonna try to touch on. So anyways, these other ones are great. You, you begin to get a better understanding. I might look at um, uh, US Army Europe and Africa and go, you know what? I'm I'm not able to uh, support OCONUS outside the continental United States right now. And, and frankly, if you're under five years of business, uh, five years of federal experience, don't even bother. It's, 
it's just adding a level of complexity that you don't need. There's so much business to be made right here on the um, uh, on, in Conus here. And so the next thing is the direct reporting units. And so as you go through here, you begin to get a whole a view of a much larger group of uh, units. And in here, you start seeing that they they tend to have this theme, right? You had Forcecom and Tradoc up above these big picture commands. And down here, they're really beginning to be focused. Test and evaluation, human resources, um, uh, intelligence and security, military. Well, the military district of Washington is different, but Medcom, um, you know, the Postal, the Acquisition Center. As you get in and you're exploring, you might find a fit. So uh, if you're in the construction space, the Army Corps of Engineers is a perfect place to go. And it doesn't matter if you want to support other agencies. The Army Corps of Engineers is the federal government's leading construction agency. Um, many of the construction projects that are larger come through one way or another through the Army Corps of Engineers. So that's a great single agency as a construction company to, to focus on and really try to drive forward and learn more about where you might fit, what teammates you want, you might want to connect with. Okay, so I'm going to pause here. This was um, a quick introduction of the commands as we go forward. So I just wanted to get an understanding of that. And I'm going to keep digging into it because we're in this first bullet of research. The uh, and Hey, Cease, if you're on, can you text me and just tell me that the uh, video stuff's going good? So um, when you start doing research, and, and keep in mind, I spent 30 minutes to prepare these uh, these tabs to talk to you about it. I would say it's fair for you to spend four hours minimum doing the same thing. I do this all the time and I've been doing it for 30 years. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm better skilled at it, but you can still do this. But one of the groups that you want to pay attention to, in addition to the Army's own site, army.mil, right, is the Congressional Research Service. This group is awesome because they keep putting out a lot of good information summarized for Congress. Well, if it's good enough for Congress to help Congress understand what's going on in the army or what's going on in this agency and that agency, then it's good enough for you. So if I come in here, one of the reasons I like this one is it's the Department of Army and Army Command Structure. And as I come down, and I'm going to try to balance my time, I think I'm going to be going pretty fast because there's a lot I want to share with you. You can always watch the replay. But in here, remember, I just showed you the command structure. Well, down here, I begin to understand, okay, here's how the senior leadership's aligned up. Here's how the operational... Um, institutional, here's what the missions are. And before I go on that, look over here on the left-hand side where it helps me understand the breakdown of the Army. It's basically regular Army, reserves, and National Guard, right? And then they break out the uh, Army civilians, but I don't, I'm not separating that. But I go, okay, when I think to supporting the Army, it's not just the regular Army. I could support the reserves. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a separate agency, right? I'm not trying to restructure the Army, but from a selling standpoint, the Army National Guard or the Army Reserves or the regular Army, they have different groups. And so um, understanding their missions, it's it's a little different for them. But here's the command structures. And this is what I wanted to point out. This is where, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, CRS is um, explaining what they do in there. So here they talk about the three different types of commands that I told you. And then down in here, as you start going in, it begins to talk to you. So like DRU consists of one or more units that have institutional or operational functions and compare that differently than um, uh, component commands, right? Component commands are operational organizations that are aligned to combatant commands and they're supporting geographical units. So their job is to support uh, these combatant commands and then up above the army commands, basically these are the guys who go to war, right? Or they're in theater, things like that. Again, I'm not trying to present myself as this army expert, um, I'm trying to show you how I begin to learn more about an organization. So the last thing I want to show you on this slide is that <clears throat> another way of seeing the organizational structure is here. This is at the headquarter level where you begin to understand how it's broken down. And if you hear teaming partners or people talk about G6, G2, G8, well, this is a great little primer for you to understand how uh, the Army is organized. So G1 is personnel. G2 is intelligence. Uh, G6, if you're in the IT space, is um, IT, right? Chief Information Officer. So you begin to learn more and more, and it helps you if you understand what you'd sell, helps you understand where you can go. One last thing I want to point out is a lot of sources I find come from what I read. So right here at the bottom, you see where it says source 
uh, Association of Army, and I'm going to show you that I opened it up. But I just grabbed this link. I'm like, okay, thanks. There's another link. When you do research, remember that it's okay to go down a rabbit hole. And, and that means you're going down uh, one tunnel, and then you turn to the left, and you go down that for a little bit, and then you go to the right. In research, you're trying to explore to learn. That's different than when you're in capture and you're specifically trying to get a, a, a task done. Okay, so um, that one I just mentioned, United States Army of Associ uh, Association of the United States Army, in here they talk about uh, 113 pages talks about the Army, and it's fantastic um, information that begins to help me learn. So if I just come down here to the table of contents to show you, right, I'm able to see yet again down here on 8, 9, and 10, the commands broken down. So I'll go down to that in a second and, and see how it's broken down. If you are new to the Army and you want to learn more about it, you can read about the army, understand the army as an organization and the soldiers who make up the army. This is you understanding your customer. What do they do, right? If you understand um, your customer and their mission and the people who, who uh, deliver that mission, then you understand how to support their mission. Your job is to not do the mission of the army. Our job, your job, mine, is to support the people who do that mission, who, who um, accomplish that mission. And so by reading these, uh, this type of information, it doesn't take you long to become uh, sufficiently knowledgeable that you can um, help them. So if I just jump down here to page 71, which I think is more like page 74, uh, where am I? Page 67. Um, there it is, Army Commands. So the reason I wanted to point this out, though, is if I come down here, I can keep learning more. I begin to understand it, right? And so here they're breaking down the different commands uh, that are in there. I can also begin to see where they're at. So let me, I'm gonna scroll a little bit faster for one second. Um, so Army Material Command, right? I can begin to understand what they do in some of the activities. So AMC is the Army's Primary Logistics and Sustainment Command. If I'm in the supply chain business, logistics business, if I'm delivering parts, things like that, makes sense that maybe these are people to call and maybe reach out to a small business specialist at AMC and you can begin to learn more. Um, this document, again, I'll put the link into the comments when I'm all done, but this document gives you a huge primer of uh, uh, about the army and it helps you understand this customer. I always say go after one customer because you can go deep, really understand them, understand what they do, understand where you fit and begin to build relationships with people who are out there. Uh, a quick touch on budget. It's always one of my favorite places to get information. Here is the Army's financial management. They control the budget for the Army or they control the budget documentation in this particular case. And it's great because um, in here I get a lot of information. By the way, if you're not familiar with the, the Army and you're selling to the Army, not only should you as a capture or business development person look at this glossary of terms, but take this document, download it, send it back to your proposal writers and tell them, look, we're going to be going after some opportunities that are in the Army. You might as well learn some of the Army language. Maybe they, they say command instead of organization or a unit or whatever, right? So learn the language and pass that to your proposal managers. Um, here, there's just great budget highlights, and I don't want to go too far into it. But over on the base budget uh, bullet, let me zoom in a little bit. Might have done that a lot. But in here, as you begin to expand it, you can excuse me, look at it and see what's there. So like military construction, I used that earlier. You can begin to see how the budget's uh, being forecasted for 23 in those three main commands, right? You can see where the base realignment and closure, uh, what's going on there. Maybe there's bases planned to be closed and you should know about that. So you're not even bothering knocking on those doors. Um, same thing up here. If you're going into um, research, development, test and evaluation, this is an area that I like playing in emerging technologies, et cetera. This is harder for me because there's no clear uh, guidance on which document to click on, but it doesn't matter. I'm committed to knowing the Army. I'll just click on each one of these and get to know what's in there. It won't take me long to look at these 10 or so documents and go, this one's no good for me. This one's no good. Oh, this one's good. I'll look at it later. This one's no good. This one's good. You can do that same thing as you look through all these documents. Um, so I did open up one of them for the, uh, the highlight. So Back here, I showed you right here that there's the Army uh, budget highlights. And when you go in, this is another great set of information that you should be able to absorb over lunch in an hour, over coffee in an hour, um, over a beer and really enjoy it. Um, and you come down here and you can see what's going on. 
right? The Army budget trends will tell you whether uh, money is uh, spending is going up, spending is going down. Uh, you can look in and um, see how they're aligned, right? The civilian workforce is, is just combining that with the military personnel. You can see how big uh, the Army really is and, and the commands that you're going to support. That might give you an idea of how big projects might be. For me, something I, I, I would look at is the uh, modernization strategy, for example. I might look in there. But when I do look in there, I might realize that what it's really talking about in this document is modernization of weapons, not modernization of IT systems. Well, all right. And so I'll move to another one. But you learn that by going through a document like this or several documents. If the Army is your target customer and you expect to make one, five, ten, a hundred million dollars from them, then I would expect you to be reading these documents and taking one to four weeks to become very knowledgeable about what's going on. If you read a FY23 document like this, you'll often become more knowledgeable than many of the army people you're going to call because they swim in their small swim lane where you're trying to swim in the entire army pool, if that makes sense. Uh, another one of these great documents from congressional research that I found, it just talks about Force 23 or not Force 23, but Army 2020. 20, 2030, but it's this long range look at what's going on, just uh, one and a half pages, I think, but it begins to help you understand what's out there, how they plan on reorganizing, what are some of their uh, challenges. And then one of the things I like, again, is these additional references. Um, both of these documents I've actually posted on LinkedIn, giving summaries saying that I thought they were great, these ones in the additional resource. So if you're in there, you can decide which documents are worth you know looking into more. Um, so then I'm moving to some uh, higher level documents that I just think are fantastic. If you take the time to research and you're researching on Army or congressional sites, GAO, whatever it is, there's all sorts of document uh, information out there for you to absorb and learn about the Army and begin to understand which parts of the Army should you dig into further. And so in here, this is an Army industry day, basically, but it's this um, technical exchange meeting between the Army and industry, right? They want you to understand what's going on, where what they're working on, what they want to work on. 87 pages, 87 slides of information as you go through. And I'm just going to tap through this a little bit um, as we go forward. So, so right here, you can begin to look at, um, you know, what are some of the things they're talking about? I jumped right away to uh, the future network and data management. Those are places that I know people I support would be very interested in, in knowing. That said, I am going to look at all 87 pages because as I go through, I can, and I'm going to go through a little faster just to get to some pages forward. Uh, but as I start coming in here, right, dragging cloud in the edge uh, and the so what, I love that line, the so what. Uh, but in here, I quickly noticed da uh, strategic data is in the cloud and DOD talks about treating data as a strategic asset. And, and, and I deal with customers who work on data or you know, are data experts. And so here is data and it's talking about Dragon Cloud. If I don't know what Dragon Cloud is, I can say, well, let me go dig more into that. So now I've got my homework to go figure that out. You know, can I, this is about the field, but can I support the cloud in the field? You know, blah, blah, blah. And so it's the same thing as I come down, right? Here's Dragon Cloud and it talks about um, some of the ways it interacts throughout, um, throughout the network. And so just understanding that. One other thing I wanted to show you, like right here, they begin to give things like um, the CS framework process, where they're at for CS 2025. And, and the whole point of it, though, is you can begin to look at what they're talking about. This is fantastic for you to get an initial understanding and then to begin to get in and talk with them and say, well, what is CS 25? How can I fit into that? You know, if I'm just asking what CS 25 is, there's a good chance I'm going to fit in as a sub, not a prime but I still want to learn about this so I can talk um, to the primes and understand it. Or if I'm going to talk to the government, I can understand it. Um, this document, I just love. There's so much stuff down here. One thing to keep in mind is it's got fantastic amount of pictures and there's nothing wrong with using a picture like this and a response back to the army. And you just uh, put a reference on it that says, Hey, this picture was from this document or whatever. And it doesn't mean you're creating it, but you're saying we're looking at this picture and we fit here or something. Um, so these are great documents for you to look at. I'll put it in the link or in the comments. So um, when I was in this document and I'm digging through and I'm finding stuff I like, I want to dig deeper into a couple of those ones I pointed out. And so here I'm looking at PEO uh, C3T. And in this particular one, and let me make sure it's spread out, 
it's again 75 pages, right? And I actually got this one. Let me see if the next tab shows it. I actually got it from their site. <clears throat> so it's a little out of order because I wanted to do it this way. But in here, I'm able so understand PEO C3T is just one program executive office in the army. And and it itself is a porf has a portfolio of projects. And so coming down, I don't want to spend a lot of time here because I notice I'm getting pretty close to the end. But down here, I can begin to look at um, project management I2S or something, capability set development, um, command post computing, mission network. I can see these things. And just by looking at them, I can either figure out what I might be good at and I should explore more. Or if this is my first time in C3T, then I would take the time to go through these 70 eight pages. Even if it took me a day, I would take a pen and keep coming back to this table of contents going, um, global broadcast service. I thought it was something of us, but no, we can't do that. You know, crossing it out. Um, integrated tactical networks. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to circle that one to do further research on. This is something that you can keep in mind. And as you go down, let me just jump really quick. Um, <clears throat> there was this great image. Sorry. I should have remembered what the heck it was. Oh, well, I lost it. But I was trying to find this one image that shows you how things are all fitting together. But when you're down here, they talk about the description of the project, their capabilities, so you can see that they're in configuration. Um, and then uh, they, it also tells you where what line of effort they fall under. So a lot of fantastic information that came from me just looking for a document explaining PEO C, uh, C3T. So you can always go to the website. I'm not going to go too far into this, but here's their website. I can dig farther into it by going down to different commands like I am here. And in here, I get a general understanding. When I reach out to people, I know what I want to ask on. I can begin to say, hey, I'd like to explore Mission Command Cyber more. Can I talk to somebody about it? So from PEO C3T, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I noticed up on the right-hand side that they're engaged on social media. Well, now I'm moving into this idea of um, outreach and capture. And so if I click on LinkedIn, it takes me to their site on LinkedIn. And in here, I don't want to get into research anymore on, on my topic today on LinkedIn Live, but I do want to point out that I could go into the post if I wanted to or looked at videos and see what they're talking about. But what I was really looking for when I move in here is here's PEO C3T, and I can see all 121 employees on LinkedIn that are in here. Um, and I can also do it this way too, right here at the tabs. If I click people, I can begin to see where they're at. Uh, many of them are right here in the DC area where I'm at, um, up in Baltimore. And as I come down, I can begin to see people. And the first one that I noticed, let's say, is the uh, Deputy Program Executive Officer at PEO C3T. One of the reasons I like that title is because I know in the Navy, the Deputy PEO uh, has been designated as like a small business uh, outreach advocate. Their job is not to be a full-time small business specialist, but they're supposed to help make it easier for small businesses to engage their program executive office. And so, you know, I can click on him, come over into LinkedIn. Over here, I can track what he's doing, his activities, maybe engage him. I do a whole separate set of videos about how do you engage people. Um, but right here, I can see that I've got 21 mutual contacts. And so I could click on these to see if any of these people know this guy directly. Sometimes we're connected, but we don't really know him. But does anybody know him directly so that you might make an introduction? So it's a way for me to get in there. A um, couple of other things I just wanted to highlight. The Army has a, its own Office of Small Business Programs website. You can come in here and, and uh, learn more about how to do business. Right here is a whole section on it. Um, they've got some videos down there. But the part I wanted to drive towards is finding opportunities. If you go into the long range forecast, this was just, uh, sorry, this was just a link right here under the resources. If I go into that one, I can come up with, let's say material command. And on material command, it lists out a, um, a ton of different opportunities, right? That you can begin to pursue. If you look at the scroll bar, you can see that there's just a lot. But one of the things I wanted to point out is you need to look through this and see what's there. If I see something that's set aside for 8A, I don't care if I like it, I'll just go find an 8A company and be a subcontractor if they'll let me. Um, so keep that in mind. Subcontracting is the same kind of money as prime contracting. It's just a, it's a different thing, but the money still spends. Um, the one last thing I wanted to point out is that, um, you know, from the forecast alone, you could <clears throat> identify who the specific small business specialist is out there. And you can see that there's a whole bunch. There's probably 
you know, at least 25, 40 um, different points of contact there that you could call. And so here are their name and email address uh, that you can reach out. One last tip, feel free to look on Google for Damien. And I bet you, you can find his phone number pretty easy too. Um, I had one other thing I was going to share, but I'm out of time. So I don't want to keep sharing there. Uh, I do want to come back and see if there are any questions that um, are out there. Hey, Philip, glad to have you. Uh, small business consulting, by the way, yeah, definitely throw in your uh, company and let us know what you do, um, where you're at, you know, company name and which core competency. I, I love to see that. And, and if I could circle it back around to an introduction, I make those introductions whenever I can. So um, <clears throat> anyways, this was a fun topic for me, right? I love doing research because uh, when I had my own company for 20 years, people used to tell me, oh, you got to do your homework. I'm like, well, how? And a lot of this stuff was elusive. Part of it now is that we've got the internet. So I am older and I was doing stuff pre, uh, um, pre slide decks being dropped, right? And now I can pretty much find any slide deck from any event. Somebody's gonna put it on the internet. So it's a lot easier now, but still this ability to understand an agency like the army, like I just showed you, um, is a process. And if you follow that process, you can really get to know an army command or an army project management uh, office well, and you can replicate this to any other agency that's out there. So, okay, I'm going to wrap up. If you found this content valuable, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I appreciate that because it lets other people know uh, about these LinkedIn Lives and also about this Army event today. Um, and if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out directly. If you're not connected to me on LinkedIn, please connect with me. I love to have the connection and, and see where we might be able to help each other. Re remember, government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. I'll see you at the next time.